What's up, guys? Nepenthes here, and welcome to what feels like the end of FIFA, actually. Um, for the third consecutive day, there is nothing in the game. Now, it was Canada Day yesterday, so you can almost give EA a pass for that, although scheduling content shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it was confirmed from Zaro that foot swaps will be coming. The fact that we didn't get it today or yesterday makes me think it's going to be uh, footies themed. And so we'll either get it tomorrow or on Friday, potentially. Um, and there's something... I, I feel like something else is coming tomorrow along uh, other than footies. Uh, EA tweeted out the team of the week a few days ago that this will be the last team of the week until August 14th. Come back next Wednesday to see what we're releasing instead. And of course, we already know footies is coming. Um, so I don't know if they're going to give... I don't know what they're going to give us every Wednesday at 6pm. So maybe the best of is coming back. Maybe a festival of style event is coming back um we don't know um however the, the fact that there's just been no content after you know fernando torres sbc which was great and the african nations sbc which was great the martinez and iniesta sbc which were great i kind of felt like ea were going on down this path of all right we're, we're you know the game cycle's done we recognize that let's start giving back to people and just let everybody play with anything for for fun um but with no content for the last three days outside of the weekly objectives which i will say are pretty interesting um yeah it's I, I just don't know i don't know what ea expect people to do like one of the sad things is and, and we're, we're going to get to talking about this a bit deeper about team of the season in a second one of the sad things is if you're even a remotely hardcore player you can do the weekly objectives in like a couple hours maybe a, a day at most and if you're a casual player um you're probably not even caring about the weekly objectives you know so what we have here this week uh, win three rivals matches using only players bought off the transfer market for a 100k pack it's a brilliant objective um the problem is and again we'll actually talk about this a bit deeper um in a second the problem is is that so many people especially at a high level don't care about the weekly objectives that you're hindered um, and, and I'm not going to get into it too much now, um, but sweeper keepers, uh, you know, we talked about this when it came out. I actually think in, you know, this is a brilliant objective. I think it's, I think it's fantastic. I would love to see more of this, you know, this coming Friday, give us four, four weekly objectives, win three online single matches, using only strikers, using only midfielders, using only defenders, using only fullbacks, using only five-star weak foot players, using only players with 50 or more, sorry, 50 or less stamina, you know, give us some just give us some fun unique properties like that and, and what's quite disappointing um in the whole scope of the game is that they clearly have the ability to track these properties so they have the ability to tell when you win a game with 11 goalkeepers and when you win three gate or win a game with items that were either purchased off the market or that were pack pulled um they give you win three matches using a player with each club that Torres has played for they have the capabilities of tracking this data and yet they've just been so so narrow-minded with the way that they've created objectives and they obviously have so much scope to create fun and engaging objectives the the biggest problem and the thing that I hope changes next year is that there's nowhere really to complete these objectives you know as I say champs just not viable rivals is not viable for anyone regardless of what division you're in you're playing at your best level of fifa and so you're just always coming up against a tough opponent on your standard all the time so it's not viable and online singles doesn't offer anything in return and and it doesn't it doesn't give you the opportunity to have a base entry requirement like the old tournaments did like daily knockout last year if it said you can only have one nation and you tried to play with two nations it wouldn't let you search for a game Whereas this year, playing on online singles, if you go in with your three sweeper keepers, you know, your three keepers, and someone rocks up with their icon squad with a bronze bench, you're just going to get tanked. And, you know, it, again, it gives a really weird disadvantage to some people. Um, so hopefully next year we get a, a place to play for the objectives where you're only playing against other people that are also playing for the objectives. I think that would create a lot less of a toxic atmosphere within uh, the whole FIFA cycle. Um, but yeah, so I feel like EA kind of just given up a little bit right now. Maybe, maybe they know that tomorrow at 6pm is going to be massive. You know, and again, it's that lack of communication. Yeah, we know footies is coming, but why have we had nothing for three days? You know, they could have given us something. Basic daily SBCs, another flashback, an end of an era of Vincent Company for leaving Man City. 
Uh, they could have given us so much over these last three days that the African nations SBC was brilliant. Give us that for Europe and South America. Why not? Um, but yeah, so that, that's where we're at with that. Uh, but the reason why we're here today um, isn't because of FIFA. It's because FIFA is dead. The reason why I'm, I'm here on this video today uh, is because I was messaged by uh, the Foot Economist, uh, as you guys know, was a content creator uh, and, and is an avid FIFA player and has been picked up by EA to go and... Um, work for them for FIFA 20 game cycle as a live content producer and first of all congratulations to him on the job that's amazing and I, I think even though I, I got a lot of respect and time for a lot of the guys that work at EA you know I've got good personal off off the record relationships with these guys but what I love about this move from EA is they bought somebody who's been engaged and involved in the most up-to-date iteration of FIFA as a consumer not as an employee and so for Jamie to go into EA at FIFA 20, he's going to feel what we feel. He, you know, he, he's been through the things that we've been through as a customer, as a consumer, as a player. And he gets to take that to EA for FIFA 20 to hopefully help produce better, more engaging live content. And with that, he DM'd me a couple of days ago. Um, and he said, uh, hey, Nick, with team of the season wrapping up, I was wondering if you had any feedback on the campaign as a whole what did you like and what didn't you like and what would you have changed, etc. Now, over the course of the campaign, I've talked about the things that I liked and didn't like in general, but I've never had it in one condensed area. And the fact that he's interested in the feedback here uh, is great. I said that it's going to take me a couple of days to write it down because it's a lot. I've got a lot to say about this game as per usual. Um, and then in the end, I asked him if I could just make a video on it and reference the conversation to give some context as to why I'm making the video. And so that's why we're here right now. And so in short, I thought Team of the Season was horrendous. I thought it was one of the worst promotions EA have done this year. Uh, it didn't really fit, in my opinion, for any, anyone in the game. Um, we can start with the weekly, the, the weekly objectives. Generally speaking, again, they're okay. But what the problem is, other than the things that we've already talked about with the regards of sometimes, you know, I'm in Division 1, I'm at almost 2,600 rank skill rating. I'm coming up against pros or top 100 caliber players. They don't care for a, a Renato Augusto team of the season card. So they're not building a squad for him. And so if I build my squad for him, I'm just put at an immediate disadvantage when I come up against these guys. It takes me far longer to achieve uh, the goal compared to if I relegated myself down and played against people who are far, far less uh, able than myself at FIFA, which in turn makes it more difficult for them, which makes it unfair for them, which might in, in, you know encourage them to relegate themselves down. And it gives a knock-on effect all the way down the divisions where even throughout early stages of the game, you know, people were holding in Division 4 instead of being in Division 1 because it was easier, the rewards were almost as good. Um, but in terms of Team of the Season weekly objectives... I didn't enjoy the fact um, that you kind of get punished for attempting the weekly objectives. And the cards in general, this is something I've had an issue with foot swaps all year, which kind of translated through also to team of the season, is the people that got the weekly objective cards didn't need the weekly objective cards. They used them to help complete icons to improve their team. And people that needed the weekly objective cards don't play the game enough to have enough time to get the weekly objective cards. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the, the cards that you could get through squad battles weren't good enough. Um, and the cards that you could get through online singles always had some error. You know, whether it was a stupid uh, stamina level or a stupid weak foot or just from an odd league and nation. So they just didn't link. And there, there are some anomalies. But if you think about all of the weekly objective cards that have been on offer... And then you go into a rivals game or you go into a champs game or you just look at anybody's end game squad right now. None of them have weekly objective cards in. Um, so all in all, I think they were a little bit pointless. And what I would have liked to have seen with the weekly objectives, I, I, well, I wouldn't really have liked to seen cards through weekly objectives. You know, one thing that I would have liked to have seen is I would like to have seen uh, cards in squad battles. And I, I've made videos on this before. I've talked about this before. But again, just to put it all in one place for context. I would like to have seen the squad battles card be a card in squad battles, not a weekly objective that you have to play in squad battles for. So for first place, two ultimate packs, two rare mega packs, 100,000 coins. I don't know. Let me, let me grab some uh, weekly objectives, FIFA 19. I want to see what the squad battles uh, card was um, last week. I don't know if, uh, if I've been have last week's weekly objectives. No, does FIFA UT team have last week's weekly objectives? 
Yes, they do. So last week, um, it was Renato Augusto for four single online matches. Uh, team of the season moments, Howard Ez. So using uh, League of Russia players in four separate squad battles wins on minimum of world-class difficulty, right? You get a Howard Ez. He was 88 rated and he was garbage. No, I've, anyone that did that wasted time, first of all. And B, if they did it, they pretty much did it to get uh, a card to put into an icon or, or they did it just because they play squad battles. What would have been better is if the rank one reward was a 99 Howard Ez and the rank two to 10 reward was a 95 Howard Ez. And the 9, 11 to 20 was a 94, 93, a 92, a 91, a 90, an 89, and then an 88 for gold one, an 88 for gold two, an 88 for gold three. So every, whatever level, any entry level, even if you finish here, 100% of all players, if you just play a squad battles game, you know, put a minimum win set on it, put, put a minimum game on it. So play a minimum of four uh, games in squad battles to unlock this. But even if you finish in bronze three, you get the achievement that that would be amazing for me that would make me play this game that would have made me play to top 100 in squad battles if i was going to get myself you know let, I, I i'm typically good enough to get sort of uh top 10 top 20 in, in squad battles if i was going to pick myself up like a 94 rated howard Ez, this is now all of a sudden it's worth my time a little bit so i would like to have seen that in squad battles each week instead of a weekly objective and again then it's on the person themselves to put as much or as little effort in as they want to be able to achieve the the rank and it's the same for squad battles and foot champions. For for fight rivals, instead of the what was it for fight rivals on this one? So it was Renato Augusto. No, um, first owner. No, was there a fight rivals one? Swap deals player. Swap deals player. Swap deals player. Uh, Howardes Augusto. Team of the season Joe. That was squad battles matches as well. So have Howardes and Joe in there. Why not? Um, for the week before that, team of the season Mvia. Score using League One players in four separate rivals wins, right? And you get a, a Mvia card. Now, the Mvia card was quite good. What I would rather see instead is in the reward set here where you get your packs. Now, I'm in Division One. A lot of you guys are in Division One now as well because of the Division re-ranking. But I would like to see Rank One in Division One give out a 92 rated Mvia. Rank Two, a 91, a 90, an 89, an 88. And then in Division two rank one gives out you know 91 and scale it down division three give it a 90 and scale it down so everybody gets awarded with this card for just playing rivals and the more you play and the better you are the better version of the card you get that again would have actually got me playing rivals each week because there's no there's no win condition there's no oh you have to do it with some obscure team that's going to give you to a disadvantage no you can play with a team that you want and even that would allow people to experiment because if they're just going for rank points, just scoring goals is enough to get you some rank points. Even losing games gives you rank points. Like, you know, it, everybody would get the opportunity to pick up the cards. It's just, again, it's just something that I would have liked to have seen. Uh, something else that I would like to have seen in Team of the Season would have been to do with the draft. Obviously, myself as an avid draft fan, uh, it would have been amazing if there were rewards change the reward structure to draft would have been amazing you know i've won the draft 83 times now i know it says 203 entries but as you guys have seen over the last few weeks i've been throwing away drafts on this account to do just like draft challenges and such but it would have been awesome if um e even even as a weekly objective um or you know a team of the season themed objective per per week or however you could do it through draft you know obviously i i have to understand that everything that we would need EA to be able to do that I would want personally, it would have to be within the conditions of the game currently. So in this regard, it would have to be through weekly objectives. But it would be cool if they had a drafts objective. So win 12 games in draft, not 12 drafts, but just 12 games in draft this week and pick up a unique draft only achievable team of the season card. So whether that be some special, um, who was somebody that didn't get a team of the season that people wanted? James Forrest, right? Maybe it's a 93 rated, 94 rated Forest card, but it's not team of the season. It's not team of the season moments card either, but a draft themed team of the season card. So if you come up against that in champs or in rivals, you're like, hey, this guy owned this through draft. For me, it would just give it a little bit more of a, a, a reason to play the different game areas and the different game modes. Um, so that's what I would have, you know, what I would like to have seen with regards to the objectives and the different game modes outside of Ultimate Team. 
With regards to Ultimate Team, for me, the biggest issue is just the rewards are just horrendous, right? Um, even, even now, these rewards here, it's diabolical, honestly. You, you, you're asking people, we're in July now, and, and you're asking people still to put in 30 games worth of effort into a game cycle that the EA don't care about anymore, as we can tell by the, the lack of interest in the game over the last few days, um, you're asking people still to say, hey, here's 30 games, and what you get is 11 team of the season players. Now, Zaro again had confirmed that all of the team of the season players are up for, for grabs. Now, I don't know because, again, they haven't clarified. I don't know if one or more of the players, let alone the red picks, but out of the team of the season pack, I don't know if there's a guaranteed minimum rating. I don't know if there's a guaranteed minimum number from a major league. But when you look at the volume of team of the season players that you could get that you don't want to get this is a bad reward set man even like let, let's even d disregard the top 100 and elite and just go to gold right if you're getting two player picks from gold three two and one and there's not a minimum requirement of a 95 or 96 rated or higher player as a guaranteed one player the level of players that you can come up uh, that, that you can pick up excluding SBCs and weekly objectives, but there are loads of 80s, 83s, 84s, 85s, and we know how the rewards have gone. I've opened so many rewards and red player picks over the last few weeks that you know full well that these are the kind of guys you're going to be getting. You're going to be getting this goalkeeper from, from Greece. You're going to be getting the left back from uh, Turkey that just is just unusable. The centre back Mancini, who's just tragic. This is what you're going to be picking up. Of course, some people are going to hit still Ronaldo's and Messi's and stuff. But even now, team of the season rewards are here. Hopefully, EA can take this as feedback for the immediate term in the game. Reward people for playing ultimate for playing foot champs still now. The the whole competitive aspect of champs has gone. All the qualification points are achieved. People have either qualified or they haven't. There's no way for them to gain more points. There's no reason to keep foot champs as stringent as it is uh, right now. It, it, it's literally pointless, uh, right? There, there's no reason to keep it so strict. So one thing that I would love to see is I would love to see the threshold for wins reduced for the rest of the game. So drop each rank by a rank. So for Elite 1, drop it down to 25 wins. Elite 2, down to 20. Elite 3, down to 17. Uh, no, down to 20. You know what I mean? Like So Elite 3, instead of 23 wins, is now 20 wins. Gold 1, instead of 20 wins, is now 17 wins. Gold 2 is down to 14 wins. Gold 3 is down to 11 wins. Let people get 11 wins and get gold three rewards. Who cares? It's the end of the game cycle. It doesn't make any difference. Or at least I don't think it does. You know, and again, I'm only speaking from my perspective and, and what I would like to see in this game. And that's not always the right thing for what the whole game needs. It's usually just the right thing for what I and usually you guys want. Um, but I would love to see the, the weekend league kind of changed. And in terms of team of the season itself, one thing that I hated this year that I hope that they change for next year is the upgrade path. Um, they For the first year, I think, ever, they followed a very, very... Obs well, not a, an obscure upgrade path, but they followed an upgrade path. So you can already predict or know what the players' in-game stats are going to be based on whether or not they're going to get an upgrade or not. And I don't, I don't like that because that renders obsolete players that could have been a whole bunch of fun to play with and that could have fit the meta a little bit uh, Santi Cadola being one of them, five star, five star, high low work rates, five foot six. Okay, so he's not tall enough for the current current gaming meta, but his work rates are great. His skill move and his weak foot are great. And then you go to his attribute cards, and his shooting is real nice. His passing is real nice. His dribbling is real nice. His defending is pretty good as well. And then he has seventy four stamina. And it's like th this is a pointless card now because when you're playing against teams like I have, where every card ninety four stamina for him, or oh, Ronaldo's got terrible stamina. 95 stamina for Hullet. Even Fernando Torres has terrible stamina. But the upgraded card, 93 stamina for Aubameyang. When I've got a team full of superstars that can run all game, and I come up against someone that might have that Hatton Ben Arfa moments card and Santi Cazorla, and, and one of the strikers, one of the really good team of the season strikers, has just a horrific stamina, like 30-something, um, for somebody who actually has potential of being a, a high-end player. I can't remember exactly who it was, um, but there was definitely one of them. Uh, was it not Piontek, was it? Shuani Yilmaz, was it Yilmaz? Does he have terrible stamina? Yilmaz has 79 stamina, so that in itself is bad. 
And, you know, we're at that stage of the game where we've had enough cards on the market now. We've had this year thousands of cards, like more than ever before in terms of high rated cards. And yet you still only see the same pool of like 30 players. And that's because this game is still hyper competitive because of the way EA have ingrained rewards and win conditions. So everybody just sweats it out as much as possible. I would love to have seen this Fernando Torres just give him 99 stamina. Who cares? What, what difference in the game at this stage is it going to make if he has 99 stamina versus 79 stamina? And so next team, next year for, for content, for live content, give the cards that we're getting boosts. Give them boosts that are going to make them usable and fun to play so that people don't get funneled into one style of team and have options to explore when, you know, you know right now, I, my biggest concern right now with my team is do I play Tellez at left back or Alexandro at left back? That's all I've got. I don't really have much more than that because the rest of this team is just, there's no one out there outside of 94 Hullet and 92 Vieira and 97 Ronaldo and 99 team of the season Ronaldo. There's nobody else out there that improves this squad in any way. And there's nobody out there that can even compete with this squad in any way. I'm never going to use another defender over Virgil van Dijk because his massive height and like insane uh, in-game stats make him the best. I don't want to have to use Van Dyke every game and see everybody else use Van Dyke every game. Give us 20 or 30 or 40 different centre-back options that are actually viable at this stage in the game. That's what I would like to see. Um, so in, in terms of the rest of team of the season, I, I thought the upgrade packs were pretty horrific. Um, I, I understand, again, that from a market perspective, releasing the upgrade packs that EA may have released last year or for team of the year might have been a bad move because it would have just given everybody too much. But once again, I don't think that's an issue. You know, when we get to this stage of the game, again, we get cards like this Quagliarella, that I think is phenomenal, by the way. One of the best value for coin cards in the game. I paid 400,000 coins for him. He's nowhere near that anymore. I think he's like less than 200K. Um, there you go, 210K. This card is so cheap that, it, you know, every everybody can have access to him. So it's not... There's no problem in giving everybody access to, to many high-rated cards because it's this stage in the game. So if we have an upgrade SBC that's just paying out too much, who cares? Like, you know, what you've already got the bulk of the FIFA point sales this year. This should be about a time of giving back. And that's what Team of the Season always used to be about. And this year, for the first time ever, Team of the Season for me was just a big, big bust. So... Um, yeah, upgrade packs I definitely would have done a bit more of. The EA have done so much throughout the year that has been fun through SBCs. You know, they they gave us the um they gave us the Champions League SBC set for the final set where it get you know it gave the um the games paired up from the quarterfinals to semifinals final. So it's seven uh, objectives, a great end reward. Why not give a team of the season set up like that? where it gives you, you know, 10 objectives to complete through, make it, put it, put it in the advanced SBC section. So there are, there, there's unlimited time to do it. So people could do it at their leisure. Uh, have, have it, you know, like these, these things have, you know, five segments, but have 10 segments in it and give some pretty cool rewards for the 10 segments. And then for the final segment, just give a team of the season player pick pack. And you just pops up five team of the season. You get to pick one, you, which one you want and make it repeatable. So, yeah, okay, the, the market price of the players that are acquired are going to go up right there, just like they do with league SBCs. You know, certain fullbacks or 81, 82 rate players are going to be worth a, a little few thousand extra coins here. But that then adds value to opening packs with FIFA points because you can open a regular 7.5k pack. And I'm sure there are packs in store right now, like even though they've given no SBCs. Oh, of course, there's promo packs there. Um, uh, it gives value to opening a mega pack, right? If, if there's SBCs that keep the 75 to 82 rated cards with value, and then 83 pluses just generally have more value anyway, people are going to be more inclined to spend money on packs because they're going to get more back for their money spent on packs. Whereas right now, I can't imagine anyone that's spending money on packs. There's nothing in packs, a shoddy team of the week and un unpackable icons. Uh, there's no special cards outside of that. There's no team of the seasons outside of that. Player prices are just dropping heavily because there's no SBCs to, to maintain market price. There's literally no good reason to open packs right now. But an SBC set that required, um, you know, players that are going up in value, you know, sometimes when marquee matchups comes out, certain gold cards go up to 7 or 8k. I'm now more inclined to open mega packs or to open player packs 
because if I hit one of those players, I'm making a good chunk of coins back that can go towards uh, improving the squad. So that's what I would have done with SBCs, you know, and, and giving a, a team of the season reward as, as a final reward would have would have been really nice. And then in terms of foot champions rewards, the red player picks have just been horrific throughout the course of, uh, of the year, really. The first month, six weeks, maybe two months, red player picks were in everybody's team because they're an upgrade. Once it got to that point where people were able to just play their way to a better team via just smart game management and, and smart, you know, uh, coin management, red player picks have just been useless and EA have done very little to make them useful to the point where for the whole year we had um, every SBC requiring informs and red player picks don't count as informs. So that, that made them obsolete in that sec section as well. And now every SBC requires team of the seasons and red player picks don't count as team of the seasons. So it makes them obsolete now as well. So no matter who you are, or what you got, it's, it's very, very, very likely that the red player picks that you got are not worth it for you. Um, I got Allison and Trent that play. Now I played foot champs a lot. I got Tellez and Kozula. I mean, I've got, yeah, one red, 87 rated goalkeeper. I don't have any other reds. Oh, Wilson from way back when. I don't have anything else because nothing else has been worth it to me. It's just been thrown away in other SBCs because there's no, there's literally just no good reason for them, right? So this is this is the extent of my untradeables. And other than my high-end players was from a pack, from a pack, from a pack, crafted. Red SBC, crafted, crafted, SBC, red, red, uh, you know, red pack. So it's, it's like there's very little here that I have in my club to say, I played foot champs a lot this year and that sucks. Uh, I should I should be I should be like I, sh I should just be feeling like I want to play foot champs because no matter what happens I get rewarded for it. So in 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 general uh, as I say I I think team of the season was a very very poorly run promo. I don't think it gave back enough. The SBC cards that were available were extremely overpriced until the final week where they became a little bit better priced. And then the week after, they started releasing amazingly priced SBCs like that Torres and such. But when you look back at some of the SBCs, and in fact, we can look back at some of the SBCs uh, because fortunately, Footbin has the, uh, the expired SBC set. Uh, when we look back at some of them, e e even the um, upgrade SBCs were extortionate. It was sometimes like 20 to 30,000 coins, 40,000 coins for an 82 rated plus player pack. It was extortionate. And I understand, again, like they can't give it out for 5K or they don't want to give it out for 5K because of the way that it will impact the market. It will hyper crash the market. Nobody will have any need or reason to buy packs. But that's EA's job then to balance that a little bit better. Uh, but when we look back at the SBCs, um, flashback Riyad Mahrez at 600,000 coins. Crazy. That 89 Hatton Ben Arthur that had such low stamina that I can't imagine anybody that did this SBC and if you did this SBC you, you're the re, you're you're the reason why EA released these SBCs if you did this SBC if if they're on their metrics they're like hey 73,000 people completed this, this this SBC let's release another one at this value with this type of card you're the reason why because this SBC is horrific a player with medium low work rates anyway is terrible four star weak foot five star skin was obviously very nice now if this was a team of the season card and not a team of the season moments card there's way more value in it because you can reuse it in an SBC after you've maybe had a few games of it for fun. But when you look at his in-game stats, 59 stamina is just pointless. It's just literally just pointless. And again, it takes me back to this archaic upgrade method that they're using where they're just following a strict rule set instead of using some initiative and saying, hey, this, this card is not good enough with 59 stamina. Let's just bump it up to 89 stamina and let people enjoy the card. That, for me, would have made a world of difference during Team of the Season. It, again, if we could have picked up cards that would have been fun and usable rather than judging whether the card is good enough or not based on what future use we can use for it in another SBC. Um, there were a few other SBCs out there that were just crazy, crazy uh, silly value. Um, Alwa was really good for 500, 550k. He, he's a top tier end game player uh, for that much. But when you looked at uh, basically from Van der Beek and Icardi, which were good SBC values, after that, SBC values kind of got better and better and better to being great. But before that, Dries Mertens at 750k is an absolute ripoff. That Luis Muriel for 100,000 coins, an absolute ripoff. 
Um, what else did we have? This is marquee matchups came out here. We had that Faguli card for 50k wasn't too bad. Casemiro for 270k for a card that is just, again, a team of the season moments card and an unusable team of the season moments card. If you ever want to compete in FIFA, you can't use this card, right? Because he has no pace. Um, medium high work race is great. Three star weak foot is terrible. Two star skill moves is obviously terrible as well. And he's just, he's just not fast enough. He's, he's got low agility as well. So he's going to feel really clunky and really heavy. And I'm sure there are some people out there that use this card and love this card. I'm not going to tell you whether or not you should or shouldn't like a card. I'm just saying in the grand scheme of whether or not this was a good card for the sake of FIFA, it just wasn't. And it would have been fun to see SBC cards from players who don't already have SBC cards or upgrades, which we didn't see a lot. Every, m most cards that we saw were cards that already had but like something out there. So for example, this Casemiro, he already has a 90 rated SBC card, right? Why him? Why him over any other player? There are so many other players in La Liga that EA could have done a, a, an SBC moments card on to give somebody a better use of a card than this Casemiro that they didn't do. So all in all, I feel like, I, f I feel like personally, team of the season was just... I don't know. I, 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 literally, I don't even have words to describe how EA could have visioned that this would be a success because it just wasn't. There, there, was, there was very little in terms of giving back to the community. It, was, it very much felt like everything was done to just drain the community and, and extort from the community, regardless of whether that was objectives in horrific win condition gameplay in Rivals or whether that was really overpriced SBCs for cards that weren't valuable or usable enough. Uh, I just feel like EA didn't give enough back. And as I explained earlier on in the video, things that I would have liked to have seen would have been players put into uh, squad battles and, and foot champs and foot rivals for completing, just playing in them rather than over the win conditions. Uh, rewards I would have liked to have seen updated. Different players I would have liked to have seen. Better value SBCs I would like to have seen. And most importantly for next year, a, a place to play with these players. Because when it comes down to it, regardless of having every SBC under the sun, good or bad, value or not, if there's no casual area for anyone to play with these cards, no one's going to play with these cards. Because of the backward system of rivals um, reward structure and the fact that champs is a maximum game threshold. So, you know, if you lose a game in champs, that all of a sudden could cost you uh, a ranking, in, you know, getting gold three instead of gold two. So why on earth would you try out a player for fun when it could be the difference between you hitting elite or gold one and, and making hundreds of thousands of extra coins you're not going to you're never going to risk that if, if it's the difference between hitting silver one and gold three and getting a bonus red pick you're never going to risk that so you're never going to play with a fun squad in champs because of that and in rivals you're never going to play with a fun squad because you're just getting battered by these people with their top end sweat teams and then in rivals because the reward structure is so stupid people don't even want to play it anyway you're playing you're playing so many games for so little in return you know again this we're, we're at the end of the game now update these rewards man like reward people that have stuck by you th through through what has been a horrific gameplay year reward the people that have played hundreds thousands of games by updating and changing these rewards to say hey here, here's something back for you for still being here right now um that's that's what i would do but yeah i, I think i think having a cup mode a tournament mode uh, is very important for next year where whether or not you win or lose you can just re-enter and try again to try and win four games to try and get um you know a small prize a nominal prize something whether it's a small pack a coin bonus uh, a player that you can play for just something that of course will still keep it competitive in in nature in that sense but will allow you to experiment with fun teams because you know that you're just not going to come up against every game of someone with an absolutely insane monster team, especially if EA put team conditions to enter the tournament. So if right now there was a tournament where you had to have 11 goalkeepers on the starting lineup and 11 goalkeepers in your subs um, as your team, otherwise you couldn't enter it. Do you know how much more fun people would have playing that tournament? Because they know they're coming up against 11 goalkeeper teams instead of coming up against an 11 goalkeeper team or even a non-goalkeeper team, and then coming up against someone with 11 goalkeepers that goes 1-0 down, gets salty, subs on his superstars, and smashes your goalkeepers. 
that's what I that's what I personally think we should we should have from this game and what we need from this game. I probably omitted a lot of stuff here. I probably missed out on a few things that were probably key uh, important areas. So what I'll do is I'll read through the comments over the next couple of days and I might put together another list of other things that I missed out in this video uh, to hopefully help uh, hopefully help EA and Jamie. I don't know if they'll take any of this advice on board or seriously. Um, I hope they do because although I only speak for a very small percentage of the entire FIFA base, I've, I think I have a general understanding of what like the the hardcore community is missing and needs and hopefully we can see more of that next year but this guy's going to be the end of the video so thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time i'm out peace